G'day guys, how are you going? Today we're going to have a look at update 9.20 that's about to be introduced into the game, if not already introduced. For me, it's going to be introduced on the 4th or 5th of September because I play on the Asian server, living in Australia of course. And uh, for you EU and NA guys, I think you've already got it. Could be wrong, I'm really bad with dates to be honest. Today I want to discuss three main things about this patch. That is, of course, the new Chinese tank destroyers. I'm going to go through all of the tanks here and um, give a brief overview and uh, my thoughts on the tanks as well. We're going to have a look at the grand battles and we're going to have a look at major vehicle rebalances. Now, there's so many that I'm not going to go through all of them at all. So I'm going to mainly touch on, in fact, pretty much only touch on the uh, super heavy, I guess, nerfs. Um, I'm not a huge fan of these ones, but there are some really good uh, vehicle rebalances, but this one I'm just, I'm not too happy with these rebalances, to be honest. But anyway guys, let's have a look straight at the new Chinese tank destroyers. Now these Chinese tank destroyers are quite odd, and the reason I say that they are quite odd is because they don't follow a general pattern. I mean, um, you might think if you have a look at, for example, the French tank destroyer lines, they're all or well, the French tank destroyer line there, all the tanks are pretty similar in, in how they perform. Of course, they are being changed in this patch, but in general, they do perform pretty similarly. But these tanks are kind of broken up into thirds, or at least mainly the lower tiers and the higher tiers. So if you're wondering what is the main difference between the lower tiers and the high tier tanks, well, the low tiers, they have this um, pretty uh, great mobility to them. For example, having a look at the SU-76G FT, you can see that it has a power to weight ratio of 25.21, just over here guys. So that's pretty, that's pretty insane. It's certainly better than the SU-76, the uh, standard Russian SU-76, which if we have a look at, has a, um, has a power to weight ratio of 11.57. Now I'm not sure if that's with the, the lowest engine or whatever, but um, you can see that the disparity between the Russian and Chinese tank destroyers are actually, well, it's quite big. They're quite different. Now, of course, I understand that these tanks are a clone. The SU-76 GFT is literally a clone of the standard SU-76, but obviously they do perform quite differently. So obviously with good mobility, something has to be sacrificed. And with mobility, it always comes down to armor because more armor, the heavier the tank is. So the armor of this tank is pretty um, pretty shocking with 25 millimeters of frontal armor. And although it is sloped, you're gonna have HE rounds which are gonna be able to penetrate this tank. So that is something you do need to keep in mind. And once you get to about tier six and tier seven in these tanks, you start to notice that um, they, the, the, that the aiming of these tanks, the dispersion values of these tanks are quite bad, but they are quite sneaky and this is interesting because it does um, make this tank quite uh, a difficult tank to be able to master because although it does have a big gun on it it's hard to snipe in this tank because it doesn't have these dispersion values it's got uh, like all, all these really kind of um, sniper accuracy that you would want in a tank like this in a sneaky tank like this tank here which is very sneaky so if you do find yourself driving these tanks I think you will find that these tanks Although you need to stay back from the enemy, you can't go too far away. So these are very much a medium kind of fighter. You, they have very good mobility, so you can get into a spot, boom, and then get out of there because that's really what these tanks need. And then once we get up into the tier eight, tier nine, and tier 10, we can start to see some pretty interesting gameplay mechanics here. I think that they're quite balanced, to be honest, and that's, that's not a word that we can throw around too often in World of Tanks. These tanks are really well balanced, as in they have pretty good armor, they have pretty good mobility, and they have a pretty good gun. They're pretty much the jack of all trades. But I will admit, guys, that the biggest, I think, downfall of these tanks is that they're really just not appropriate for Clan Wars. So if you are trying to um, grow your arsenal of tanks for Clan Wars, then these really aren't aren't for those. And the reason I say that is because they aren't special in any way. You, they're not situational. You can't put them into a situation where they will perform better than any other tank, in my opinion. Random battles, these tanks really do perform very, very well. And that is because they do have good armor. And um, with if people don't fire premium rounds at you, which in most random battles, um, you're gonna expect that the standard shell would be the normal shell, whereas on the test server, of course, it's premium shell. So um, you can rely on the armor on these tanks. Um, they, have a, they have a big meaty gun on them. The shell velocity is slow, but 
that's something you can get used to. Um, so overall, guys, I'm really happy with these Chinese tank destroyers. So I do also want to talk about Grand Battles as well, guys. Now, Grand Battles, if you don't know, is the 30 by 30 bigger map kind of random battle. And the reason that I say it's pretty much a, a random battle is because it it is the same objective. You either destroy the entirety of the enemy team or you capture their base or they do the same to you. Unfortunately, I don't have any footage of the 30 by 30 gameplay, um, but it effectively is the same as the random battles. And the reason, guys, that I don't have the footage is because I keep trying to queue up for these big random battles, but I never get into one. You can only get into these battles if you are uh, driving a tier 10 tank or playing with a tier 10 tank. But um, regardless, I do want to say that having been into a, a couple of games in the past when this, this patch first came out or the, the test server first came out, I can say I really do enjoy these games. I feel like it adds a brand new element to the game, even though it's the exact same kind of concept as a random battle. Not only is it different, but you can also do things like in your tier 10 tank destroyers, you can actually snipe. You can, you can hide in these places that, you know, before that there was the uh, universal TD camouflage nerf um, you could do, but now you can't do it in standard random battles, but now you can do it if you are in a ranked battle. Sorry, not a ranked battle, a grand battle. So yeah, guys, I really do like this new addition to the game. I just also, on top of, of what I just said, I really do think that um, having any sort of new content in this game is really quite powerful because it does become a little bit boring playing random battles over and over and over again. And although there are progression systems, of course, that's how World of Tanks works, I feel like it kind of takes away the fun sometimes from it. My apologies guys, I just got a subscriber on Twitch and also if you guys do want to find my Twitch channel, check out the link below. Enough of that dirty self-promotion, let's have a look at the rebalancing in this patch. So onto the super heavy tanks. Now, this is a bit of a contentious issue for me because although that this patch introduces a whole bunch of really good rebalancing, um, uh, rebalances I should say, for example, the uh, Pac-88 uh, Yag Tiger, which I actually have in this account, um, it gets a huge mobility buff, which is really necessary. You find that the uh, higher tier uh, Russian tanks, uh, medium tanks also get rebalancing and things like that. Um, they're very, very warranted, but these super heavy buffs, I think are missing the point. Um, and that point really is that they're still really too strong, but they're also insanely situational. These tanks perform so shockingly on open maps such as desert maps, etc. because A, they're slow, and B, their armor can't really hold up. Now, the nerfs that occur to these tanks, um, I'll go in order. This tank here, the mouse, it had its uh, health points or HP reduced from 3,200 down to 3,000, which I'm pretty sure it used to be anyway. And um, it also had its DPM increased. Its aiming, oh, its reload time was increased by 1.3 seconds. And the Type 5 and Type 4 Heavy both received armor nerfs. So these little areas here, which you would presume are weak spots, have become more of a weak spot um, where you can shoot into it. I think this is 240 millimeters of effective armor. This is 260 millimeters of effective armor. Um, and the same goes here, but this is like 250, 270, um, something along those lines. And I think that although it is a step in the right direction, it's still really missing the point of why these tanks perform so well in some situations and just so shit in other situations. I mentioned guys that the Type 4 and Type 5 Heavy both receive pretty major mobility nerfs. Um, both of them have really slow traverse speeds now. With like this tank here, the Type 4 Heavy, which I have on my, my usual account, um, had its had its mobility nerfed, it had its like mobility uh, nerfed to uh, 17 degrees per second on tr track traverse and 17 degrees per second on turret traverse. So this tank now moves just really, really slowly. And my big pet peeve with this is I think that it kind of just makes it so like too situational. It, it becomes like the T95 where the T95 can perform well in some games but in other games it just can't and it kind of just takes the fun away from these tanks. Now I do fully understand where Wargaming is coming with this. They want super heavy tanks and super heavy tanks have super strong armor and pretty good guns. They are breakthrough tanks, they are frontline tanks and I understand that but there are so many situations that these tanks can get into. For example being placed on just a big map that kind of make this armor 
pretty much useless. And also guys, tier 8 tanks, they can't penetrate this tank even with premium rounds. Most of them anyway. Tier 9 tanks can only penetrate these tanks with premium rounds and tier 10 tanks can just go through the front of them like butter with premium rounds. So I really don't... Uh, as the game currently stands, as long as the premium rounds are the way they are, as long as the balancing overall is the way it is, these tanks are so situational that they're fun in some situations, too overpowered in other situations. They just don't really work at the moment. But I guess at least Wargaming is moving in the right direction, especially with this Type 4, Type 5 heavy situation here where they are changing the armor on it to be able to be penetrated by some tanks if you aim at a weak spot. And that's what's really necessary in this game, and that is just weak spots. Although I must admit, I am disappointed the mouse doesn't have any big weak spots on it that I could <clears throat> really take advantage of in my tier 8 tanks because too often am I seeing these tanks in random battles in my in whatever tier 8 tank I'm playing and I just know I really can't do anything against it it's just too powerful but anyway guys that really is my only complaint with this patch otherwise I think this this patch is really um, beneficial for the game I think they're moving in the right direction wargaming that is with their uh, their changing of the different parameters of tanks um, I know that they're not going to do that whole uh, worldwide or global overhaul of the uh, game mechanics because it could break the game, but they are introducing things. And I think that that's really important for the progress of this game and for us as players to be able to enjoy it. I'm personally really excited to grind up the new tank destroyer lines. I just think it'll be a, a whole load of fun and an interesting experience as well. So um, I, again, I'm really happy with this patch. But anyway, guys, thank you so, so very much for watching. If you did like this video, please do consider leaving it a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, let me know why in the comment section below. If you're new, do subscribe. I do make these videos about two times a week. Just World of Tanks, gaming videos, fitness videos in general. I think you guys can learn a lot from what I do, and I hope you guys can enjoy it as well. Thank you guys so very much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.